Shields up, Iron Breakers. Brookhan here coming at you with another video. Welcome back to Sunbreak, and today I'm going to be bringing you a guide that will hopefully help you tackle some of the most challenging monsters available in the game at this point in time. Now, before we begin the video, it is important for me to mention that I will be talking about some of the endgame systems, as I alluded to in the title of this video. So if you guys do not want to know any details or particulars about the endgame, feel free to click away now and come back at a later time. These tips are also valuable besides the end game portion of the game but I will be talking about it throughout this video there's also going to be chapters in this video that will point you towards specific things that you might want to consider that will hopefully help you because there might be things that are going to be obvious for some of the more uh, seasoned monster hunters out there but you know you'd be surprised how many times some people will just look through their gear or you know look through some of the things that I'm going to be talking here that might seem pretty basic but for some people they're like oh wow I actually didn't even remember that little detail and I completely neglected to do that thing so that is kind of like the point here let's optimize to the best of our abilities that does not mean min max with reckless abandon but it does mean let's try to make sure that we bring our best foot forward into every single hunt that is presenting a challenge to us maybe you got triple carded against a specific monster and you're like this doesn't seem seems like i'm doing something wrong it seems like i should be able to tackle this just fine and hopefully some of these tips will help you out so without any further ado let's begin tip number one upgrade your armor and i know that some people are going to look at this like what do you mean upgrade your armor of course i've been upgrading my armor like what do you mean there are several upgrade levels to your armor as you progress through monster hunter rise sunbreak so for instance this was actually a piece of armor that i used fairly early on when i was playing sunbreak and as you can see i can currently upgrade it further because it's only at level five very much like other pieces like for instance this bone helmet i also use that and at the time that i upgraded this armor when i initially crafted it was only able to go to level five now it can go much higher also keep in mind that as you level up through the game you are going to unlock new armor that is potentially going to be better than some of the other armor that you unlocked previously and you want to consider seeing if some of the the newer armor can uh, you know be re be replacing some of the pieces that you currently have because the defense values are going to be significantly more so for instance to give you guys an idea if we look at a, an armor piece that i used for a long time which is a very good armor piece is the hermitor mail which comes in with 110 defense it is at level nine so i actually upgraded this one quite a bit it can be upgraded all the way up to 15 though but still you know coming in at 110 defense pretty reasonable but if we look further down you will notice that you know you have ibushi over here coming in at 134 you have arc coming in at 134 as well so it's like you can get armor that has more defense and i know that it might not seem like much you know what 10 more points of defense that's whatever yeah sure but at the very least upgrade your armor to the last levels always check because if you've been using the same armor for long enough then that armor might be able to be upgraded even further than it was able to be upgraded when you initially purchased it in case you have forgotten naturally the other thing is going to be very much tied to the same thing upgrade your armor upgrade your weapons upgrade your weapons to the best of your ability make sure that you try to get to the end of the tree if you can even though and bring your cataclysm is probably one of the worst examples i could have brought up there because that friggin gun lance is terrible but like say for instance the daimyo and shogun tree make sure that you can get as far into it as you possibly can even though this one actually requires some end game materials as you guys can see right there in the form of afflicted blood we'll talk about that in just a couple of minutes the other thing is craft yourself a mixed set now i know that a lot of people are going to be like oh i just want to grab a set and make a full set sure thing and that is a viable strategy particularly because there's a lot of full sets in monster hunter rise sunbreak that are actually quite viable like for instance uh in my case we have the uh, heavy knight here this is a very good set in and of itself for gunlands like you can just craft this set and you'll be pretty much sorted for most abilities you'd probably want to slot in a little bit of evade extender just to really round the build out but like overall this is an excellent set as you can see from the skills here 
but usually you'll be able to min max if you do a mixed set like i can show you guys the example of my mixed set but you should really figure out which skills you want for yourself but as you can see in my case i can run around with defense boost seven razor sharp guard guard up artillery of it extended part breaker wire bug whisper load shells speed sharpening i can really get some good skills that i would potentially not get if i was doing a full set so that is an important part like you have to actually look at the the armor and stuff and i'll try to bring people more builds it's just right now i'm mostly focusing on gunlance but do try to work on a mixed set like there's also something that you can do when you're forging armor i don't know if people are aware of this or not but like in my case for instance if i press uh the square button on my controller which is the uh left plate button that should be I believe the X button on Xbox controllers and the Y button. Uh, I was actually showing this towards the camera and I'm not recording the camera, so that was smart. But it's the um, it's the square if using DualShock 4. It's the X button on an Xbox controller. It's the Y button on a Nintendo Switch. And it's going to bring this up. And there is a search functionality. So let's say, okay, I want to see which pieces of armor have which skills. And you're going to hit this and you're going to be able to see. So let's say, for instance, okay, I'm looking to get some weakness exploit, which a lot of you guys are probably going to be looking for. Boom, there you go. And this actually will bring up armor pieces that have weakness exploit and mark them with an exclamation mark so the helmet here for Zenogre is going to bring level one the armor is going to bring level two crimson vault tracks is going to bring also a little bit of that knight squire is going to bring some weakness exploit barbania has weakness exploit as well and you can see these different pieces and you can sort again like okay let's say i, I already know which pieces i want for weakness exploit now let's talk critical boost boom or let's talk specifically skills that are not in decorations, at least not on the ones that I've unlocked so far. Like, let's say for instance, some like Chain Crit. You can order by it and you can see where these skills are and where you can get them if you're trying to get specific mix sets done. And then you can plan out your mix set. I know that most people will be aware of this, but you know, for the few people that are not aware that you can sort armor like this to kind of like benefit you that's uh one way to go about it you can do the same thing for charms by the way so like if you go up to your your charms here you can actually press square as well and you can filter it throughout multiple things you can do it for skills so let's say for instance okay i want to look for all the charms with attack boost and it'll show them and, it, and yeah i know i don't have a lot of charms with attack boost right you don't have to rub it in my face uh, you can also search through slot levels like be like okay i want uh, a, a tier three slot and it will tell you how many of your things have tier three slots so you know you can cycle through this it'll make it a little bit easier for you to navigate and for you to work on your own mixed sets so as i was editing the video i noticed that i forgot to talk about pedal laces which is also an important piece of gear that a lot of people tend to ignore now i believe that a majority of players are going to have equipped the demon pedal lace 3 because that is the one that gives you the most amount of attack up and back in the rise days you didn't really need more than demon pedal lace 3 because you know most of the challenges that the game threw at you would very rarely completely obliterate you unless you're talking about apex emergencies or even um you know some of the super monsters like super rajang and super volstrax and stuff like that i would just like to remind you guys that there are two more pedal laces that you have access to besides the demon pedal lace that most people are going to be using i know you're going to have access also to the absolute pedal lace and the underworld pedal lace so the underworld pedal lace is mostly for like dual blades and bow and whatever other weapon that you happen to use that you think you're going to need a whole bunch of stamina because by default i would actually recommend you guys to check out the absolute pedal ace because it basically increases your base health to double of the demon pedal ace so if you're getting one shot and you have a demon pedal ace you might want to consider checking out the absolute pedal ace as well now i want to keep things moving so let's go ahead and talk about the next step which is make sure to improve your buddies like you see the two palicos that i have behind me here these are heroes all right these are absolute beasts and if you work on your own palicos or maybe your palamute or whatever i can't give you tips on palamutes because I don't really use palamutes all that often. I know that a lot of people run with one palico, one palamute so that they can ride the dog. It's like I just got used to web slinging through the whole map, so I rarely use that. But you want to min-max them to the best of your ability. Uh, something that I will eventually be doing is going to be a guide on how to really min-max uh, your palicos. And if you notice here, there's going to be requests that you're going to be getting uh, as you play through the game. So, like, for instance, you're going to get... Uh, 
healer upgrade campaign. So this is going to give you a special ability. Uh, assist upgrade campaign, another special ability. Bombardier upgrade campaign, another special ability. Gatherer. And Gatherer is actually one of the important ones because this is the one that comes with the Kittenator. A lot of people are wondering, how do you get the Kittenator? It's this ability, the lottery box. So you want to make sure you complete these requests. And you also want to complete the ones that come afterwards, as in this one right here, Body Commitment, because this is going to allow you to unlock lesson skills so that you can just give whatever skill you want to your buddies. And this allows you to swap your support moves, which basically allows you to fully customize your Palicos to the nth degree. Now, I am not yet ready to do a full-on Palico guide, but you definitely want to min-max them. Also remember, you're supposed to give them armor. You can come over here to the Feline Smith. You can forge equipment for them, look for the resistances, look for the defense levels, look for all that stuff. Uh, personally, I would recommend you guys try and uh, pop in a blunt weapon because then you can put in a skill for a KO King that will allow your Palicos to KO stuff. There's a lot of people that like uh, bringing in like a sleep weapon to get some sleep along the way. There's a, a specific request that you'll also get at some point that allows you to unlock the, the Catastrophe Nell, which is something that you can get, which, you know, again, this is going to give you more openings throughout the fight. But in my case, I go for blast because I want them to deal uh, damage with blast procs, and I just like seeing explosions. I just want to, you know, I just want to see the mobs explode. Pretty much, that's kind of like my, uh, <laughs> that's just kind of like my style. And I like them to to use a blunt weapon. Why? So that I can use uh, the KO King. Also, keep in mind that it is important for you to actually craft some master rank armor for them because in case they're still using high rank armor they might be getting uh, fainted quite often which is not going to be good I don't even know which armor I have equipped on them right now yeah I have like Puke Puke armor I, got. I need to improve my buddies as well but they've been doing pretty alright so I haven't been worried too much but I'm probably gonna craft them like uh, a Volstrax set here pretty soon I just need to grind Volstrax a little bit more but uh, yeah you will definitely want to upgrade their armors, upgrade their weapons so that they can do their job. But most importantly, you want to make sure that you give them like good abilities. This can all be set over there at the buddy dude. But if you guys look, for instance, at my Palico Grahatia here, you'll notice that he's a bombardier. Some of you guys might be wondering, why, why are you doing bombardier? Because you get a lot of staggers with the Giga Barrel Bombay. Every time they hit a monster with Giga Barrel Bombay, it interrupts what the monster is doing. It creates an opening. You know, it makes the monster flinch. It's fantastic. You got Mega Boomerang in there as well. And you guys are like, why Mega Boomerang? Because it triggers status ailments. Because he just throws his boomerang. It hits multiple times. And because I have Blast, it triggers Blast on the monster. That's like 200 damage. It's really good. I got some Unidemic Life because I need a lot of wire bugs. So this keeps my wire bugs going. Flash Bombay. Again, they flash the monster. They create openings. Like, this is all perfectly picked to my exact specification. Some of you guys might want different abilities here, you know? But this is what I like. Lottery box with the potential of Kittenator coming in and blasting them open. Now we have Yishtola. Yishtola is coming in with the Wyvern Blast, Mega Boomerang, Anti-Monster Mine. Again, another explosive thing that makes monsters trip and, you know, gives you openings. You, your Palico drops down a mine, you can actually run behind the mine, uh, sharpen your weapon, and if the monster runs at you, he's just gonna get staggered by the mine and you're going to be fine. Shock Tripper, so that you can get stuns on the monster, you know, instead of having to flash Bombays, because if you flash a monster too much, then it, it eventually becomes immune, or the effect is greatly reduced. So I like having Shock Tripper instead. And I use the Amusing Mist, which is just like a, an elemental damage mine, but you can use whatever you want. But the point is, make sure that you are aware of what your Palicos have. And then also, again, skill. You can increase their skill memory. You can... Uh, put uh, passive skills on them. There's a lot of min-maxing that you can do with your Palicos and Palimutes, and you want to make sure they get on that because that is going to be another edge that you can bring into battle that is pretty much passive. You don't even have to work at it. You don't even have to, like, you know, learn patterns better or anything like that. This is just something that you do, and it instantly improves your hunting experience. As you can see... In my case, I have status attack up, support centric, buddy part breaker, range centric, and knockout king. This is, again, the idea is trigger as many status ailments as possible. I can swap these for a paralysis or sleep or whatever. But trigger as many status ailments as possible. Support centric increases the amount, of t the amount of times that they do their support moves. Buddy part breaker so that you break parts. Again, breaking parts increases uh, flinching on the monster. It makes you deal more damage on the broken parts. Uh, there's even skills now that allow you to leech health off of broken parts. Parts. 
So Buddy Part Breakers is extremely useful, range centric. You know, it keeps your Palico a little bit more uh, doing ranged attacks, which in my case is ideal. Uh, knockout King, so that when your Palicos hit, if they are if they have a blunt weapon, there's going to be uh, they're going to be dealing um, KO damage, so that you can knock out monsters. There's and I use these on this on both of my Palicos, so just like keep that in mind. If you're having troubles, you can use like a healing Palico. And remember, there are more secret support moves. So like if you go to the Buddy Dojo, swap a secret move, for instance, and look at these things. You got the Healing Clover Bat, which is a bat that automatically heals you. You can have a healing Palico that comes in with healing skills if you're struggling that much, you know. You got Feline Fireworks in case your weapon does not have a good wake-up thing and you're using Sleep or something like that. Like that this is a massive explosion when the monsters wake up which deals a ton of damage so there's a lot of things that you can explore when it comes to your buddies that are going to help you out in your hunts so keep that in mind now another important thing is you want to look at monster weaknesses this is going to be the second video where i talk about this but i know that a lot of people are still not doing this if you go to hunter's notes and you go to large monsters this is going to tell you what a monster is weak to okay and this is very important, particularly when you get to the uh, afflicted monsters, because they are going to be dishing out a significant amount of damage. So, uh, say for instance, you are fighting the Great Rogi, because the Great Rogi is actually a little bit annoying. I noticed that the other day I was fighting him, and he kept, like, messing me up. So one of the things that you already know is Great Rogi uses poison. You can instantly nullify that by bringing three poison resist in your build, and you're immune to poison. You can just get rid of that whole thing. You can just completely obliterate one mechanic if you just think about how you are approaching each of these fights based on which monster you're fighting. Very much like if you are fighting something like, say, an Urzuros. Urzuros likes to punch you, and whenever he punches you too many times, you get stunned. A lot of the times people get killed by Urzuros is going to be by a stun. Guess what? You can slot in for three stun resistance. You're stun immune. And you're not going to die anymore because you're not going to get stunned and die. See, it's little things like this that are going to give you the edge as you are fighting these monsters. You slot in for things that instantly counteract their skills. There's also uh, sleep resistance in case you're fighting a great baggy. And obviously, the, you know, as you go down the list, you're going to be able to put in stuff for everything. Like you can put in something for not getting dragon blighted by Volstrax. You can put in, uh, you know, something for lightning resistance for Furious Rajang or even, you know, stun resistance also in case he's thunder blighting you and stunning you. There's so many different things that you can do to really improve your chances and also exploit the weaknesses of the monsters you are fighting. So like for instance, in the case of the great Rocky, if we see here, in the head, what is he weak to? See that sword symbol? That's severing damage. That's pretty much every weapon with the exception of like hammer and hunting corn because that will be stunning damage. Still stick 60, it's still 60 on uh, piercing as well, but you know, severing damage is gonna deal more da is gonna deal more damage than most other things. The other thing that you'll see, it there's number 40 next to frost. That means this monster is more vulnerable to frost than any other element, and 40 is a really good hit zone. So if you bring a weapon that has frost you're going to be more efficient if you bring a weapon that has water you're also going to be a little bit more efficient but not as much as if you bring frost so again min max based on the monster you're fighting now different monsters are going to have more numbers in here so keep that in mind so like for instance this monster if you're hitting him in, in the uh, abdomen and hind legs you're going to be dealing a lot less damage so you might want to consider hitting him directly in the back uh, or hitting him in the upper half or hitting him in the head with uh, you know because you got better hit zones there basically the way that it works here is bigger number better and you have water damage in there as well uh, but water even though it's good its hit zones are not amazing so you might want to consider bringing something that has more raw and if you can put in a little bit of water damage it's going to be useful as well and keep in mind there's also ailments more stars and more uh bars means it's better so this guy's very vulnerable to stun if you bring a weapon you're going to be able to stun him quite often he's also vulnerable to blast you bring the blast ailment you're going to be able to detonate him quite a few times so keep that in mind look at the weakness of each of these monsters and then decide the loadout that you're going to be taking. Also look at the strengths of each of these monsters. Like, how are you dying in this fight? Are you dying from poison damage? Bring poison resistance, you're now immune. There are so many ways to counter everything that happens in these monsters. You just have to consider skills that are outside the box. Like, don't think that all that matters is weakness exploit 
and you know attack boost and critical boost and all of these things the other utility skills are there for a reason and if you're struggling there's nothing wrong with slotting for something that works for you as opposed to you know just slotting in for a speedrunner set keep that in mind because this also gives me more more gives you more practice time with the monster and eventually you might be like okay now i feel comfortable enough not to use uh some of these more you know specific skills towards this monster and then you know you evolve now another important thing is each of these monsters when you fight them as afflicted each of them has a specific material that they are going to give you in this case it's going to be the afflicted pelt so if you're looking at a weapon and it requires a specific material this is how you can see it. You can come to the list. The list gets updated as you kill each of these monsters, and it'll tell you what each of these monsters drop. So, you know, keep that in mind. Another thing to keep in mind is also you might want to swap your switch skills around. If you are struggling, remember you now have multiple switch skills. You can swap in some switch skills that are maybe faster. You can swap in some switch skills that will do different things for you. So just keep that in mind, right? Like use skills that make sense for you for your play style do not you know if you're fighting a monster that is moving too fast and you're trying to use like for instance in my case you're trying to use bullet barrage it might not work because the monster is going to move away from the bullet barrage multiple times so you might want to consider okay maybe i'll go back to old school and i'll play ground splitter interrupting cannon which are faster skills so always optimize your switch skills based on what you are fighting as well and finally, we also have, this is before you even get into the hunt, like all of these things you can do before you even get into the hunt. But finally, we have food buffs. Really look at the food buffs. I know that a lot of people, you look at, you know, you look at these food buffs and like, yeah, I want booster, because that increases my damage. I want slugger, because that increases my stunning. And that's that. And, you, and the rest is whatever. Like, really look at these skills. There are some really valuable skills here. Like, for instance, a new one, is the easy breezy which okay here it is dango shifter which if you use this particular skill this is going to recover your health whenever you sw sk switch skill swap so you're going to be healing yourself for swapping your skills in the middle of the battle without drinking a potion with your weapon out you can instantly just like boop and heal yourself this is a very good one there are other ones dango defender whenever you take a set amount of damage it's going to you know reduce the damage of the next hit and then there's dango moxie it basically prevents you from dying depending on the level that you pop it on because level one is not guaranteed but you know dango moxie also very useful specific resistances to the monsters you are fighting like fire resistance water resistance dragon resistance ice resistance these are all important dango defender really really good saved my ass multiple times high probability that damage taken will be greatly decreased it's just a chance like a monster hits you there's a chance it'll deal less damage there's a lot of really good defensive food and in the case of dango defender for instance if you pop a dango ticket you're gonna get it at a hundred percent and if you want to know more about food i have a food guide explaining how hopping skewers work and all of this stuff that can help you but basically really pay attention to your food buffs because because they can help you as well instead of just thinking about in terms of, okay i'm gonna get boost i'm gonna get slugger i'm gonna get whatever i need to deal more damage like think about getting something that also increases your survivability right now next when you are in the hunt itself do not be shy about using wyvern rides like seriously wyvern rides give you a massive advantage you can dish out massive amounts of damage against these monsters use the other monsters to beat the crap out of your target if you are struggling with it like like really look at it this in, in, in this way anything goes when you are fighting a monster and you are struggling anything goes this isn't a game about like oh i have to defeat the monster in an honorable way it's like nah bro grab the wyvern ride beat the crap out of your target beat him out beat him up go get another monster beat him up again you know, if it goes over like 10 minutes or whatever is the cooldown, I think 10 minutes is the cooldown of Wyvern Riding, go and Wyvern Ride again and beat him up again. Like, listen, the only thing that matters is that you succeed in your hunt. The methods uh, that you employ in succeeding in your hunt, those don't matter. Beat the crap out of the monster. Get help from other players if needed be, you know? Play in multiplayer. This game is designed to be played in multiplayer. You don't have to be solo all the time. Collect 
Spirit Birds. I have a video dedicated just to quick routes to Spirit Birds so that you can get like a really fast run through the map and get as many Spirit Birds as you can. And then you can go and you can run and you can even get more. But check out that video if you want Spirit Bird routes for every map. Just quick Spirit Bird routes like two or three minutes and you'll get like a bunch of Spirit Birds ahead of the hunt. And you will increase your health. You'll increase your defense. You'll increase your damage. Like, this is a good thing. You will have better stats to tackle the monster ahead of you. And finally, let's talk about the specific mechanic of the afflicted monsters, which are part of the end game of Monster Hunter Rise Sunbreak. These monsters use something very similar to what we used to call hyper monsters, which I believe were present in Generations Ultimate. I don't know if they were present in other... Mo in other Monster Hunter games before that, because that is the one where I first fought Hyper Monsters. But the idea is there's going to be a part of the monster that is going to be marked. In this case, it'll be marked by those little red dots. Uh, hopefully, I will have spliced in some gameplay footage that you guys can watch little red dots on top of a monster. I believe it's going to be a Nargakuga. But you see those little red dots in like its hind legs or its forelegs or its face or whatever. And you'll notice me trying to target them often. You guys are like, okay, what, what is all about that? Well, if you hit those zones enough, they're going to explode and they're going to deal additional damage to the monster. So if you keep attacking zones that are not the zones that have like the little red dots around them, then you're not really doing your best to completing that hunt because you really want to be hitting those specific spots in the monster because they're going to detonate, they're going to deal a ton of damage, and they're going to keep the monster in check. Because the other thing that is going to be happening is if you allow those red dots to remain on the monster for long enough, he's going to supercharge, and then he's going to do a mega blast, and it's going to explode, and if it hits you, it most likely is going to stun you. Like, the stun, the stun chance on that thing is completely wild. I think it's almost 100%, if not 100%. Uh, and then there's going to be, like, these things that come out of it circling, and if they hit you with that, then you're done. You're probably going to die. Now, another thing that is important is while you are fighting these monsters, you want to make sure that you pay attention to when your hunter is calling out that something's about to happen. Because your hunter always warns you when a big attack is coming, depending on the voice frequency that you have on your hunter. Sorry about the people that don't like their hunter speaking, but this is actually useful. If you increase the frequency with which your hunter talks, he's going to warn you pretty much of every major attack. Now, usually you can read this on the monster as well. Like certain monsters, they'll adopt this certain position right before doing a big meaty attack and your hunter is going to scream out oh here it comes or something along those lines if you have your voices in japanese you might want to try to recognize when he's warning you of something i've set mine to english because i like playing this this monster on a more in english but you know that's neither here nor there just pay attention when your hunter is warning you because if you look at the monster and you notice okay so it doesn't look like the monster is going to do anything because he's not like in a position to attack me or anything like that, but my hunter just warned me, like, here it comes. That means that most likely the little red dots are about to explode. Move away. Run away from the monster. Put up your shield if your weapon has a shield. Block the attack because it is coming. It is going to hit you. See, that's the point. When you know how to read the monster and you notice that, you know, you read the monster just as you get the warning and like, doesn't seem like he's doing anything. It probably means the anomaly thing is going to explode. It's going to deal a ton of damage. So you want to move away. Anyway, those are my tips. I want to keep this video short because I have a tendency to ramble on. Hopefully this helps you in hunting some of these more challenging monsters. If any of you guys out there have more tips, make sure to put those in the comment section. I'll try to favorite the more relevant ones. And uh, yeah, let me know if I missed anything in this video or anything like that. And if you guys enjoyed it, hit the like button. If you did not enjoy it, the dislike button. Feedback is important. I'll see you guys in the next one. Stay strong. Stay safe. Peace out.